Good day guys! Yesterday Moonton just gave revamped Argus another buff. Watch this video and you be the judge if this is sufficient, awful, or overpowered. This is what his passive does now. It still is the same with the exception of its damage. Now the enhanced slashes deal a total damage of 325%. That is a huge jump. For comparison, the original Argus had 200% enhanced basic attack damage, while the first revamped version of Argus last November had 150%. And then, as for his ultimate, Rejoice Argus mains for Moonton has lowered down its cooldown. We still don't have 25% CC reduction though, but we'll take what we can get. Also, day by day, our family keeps on growing. Thank you for your love and support everyone. With that being said, welcome to the channel Jefferson Torres. Thank you for being here. I still am finding it difficult to last hit minions with his new animation. With that being said, it has advantages and disadvantages. Number 1, the 3 enhanced slashes deals tremendous damage like I said earlier. It also provides outstanding life still. Plus, the new enhanced engage mechanics is amazing. Revamp Argus sort of moves like Alucard now. Here, watch this. It might seem like my second skill was the one that made Argus dash, but it didn't. I simply used the second skill spontaneously with his passive third slash. Compared with the previous versions of Argus, this just made him a very challenging hero to escape from. As for the disadvantages, once his enhanced attacks have been triggered, you won't be able to cancel it. I played the new revamped version for more than 8 times since yesterday and that has been one of my problems. Changing directions is kinda difficult once his enhanced basic attacks started its animation. Even when the target is already dead, the animation still continues. Hopefully, Moonton fixes this issue because sometimes, especially in clutch situations, it causes more problems than benefits. You're pretty much crowd controlling yourself by not being able to control Argus. Also, let's pause here briefly. You obviously noticed that instead of following Cho, I went to the opposite direction. There's a reason behind that. Given my distance from Cho and given the fact that all of my chase down skills are in cooldown, I'd rather help my teammates intercept any enemy heroes that could be thinking of helping Cho out. That way my teammates can freely take him down without any worries. This is what I call predictive zoning. Zoning in general is the act of pushing back enemy heroes to isolate one of their teammates in order for your team to take the isolated enemy hero down easily. In this situation, I am not seeing any enemy heroes. I instead am predicting that this is where they are gonna come from. At this point, even though Argus is considered a squishy fighter, I'm not afraid to go up against a 1v3 situation given that my ultimate is available. Trust me, if you keep practicing, just one glance on your map and you'll have a virtual calculation of what the possibilities will be. It's okay to play aggressively and chase kills, but it's better to play strategically and keep the entire team's well-being in mind. You must have noticed already, but his skill icons were also revamped. I kinda love and hate it at the same time. Could've been better if it has a deeper shade of green. I don't normally equip Argus with tough boots nor deadly blade. But in this game, I did, and that is to counter Selena and Alucard. Selena has the longest stun duration on the game, and since Tough Boots reduces crowd control duration by 30%, it'll be a good item to help me survive in case I get hit by her stun. And we all know how powerful Alucard's lifesteal is, which is why I threw in Deadly Blade into the mix. Oh no, help me. Don't feel bad if you fail to take the enemy hero down. 
The damage you inflicted on her is enough to force her to retreat back to base. In doing so, she'll lose out on a lot of XP and gold, and in addition to that, it will give us more time to take this objective with less worries. That is still a win in my book. Another thing, the Little Wanderer now has a second phase. Once it's taken down, it transforms into a roaming ward that gives vision temporarily to the team that took it down. Whenever the enemy team is busy dealing with your teammates, take advantage of this and attempt to push the minion waves. Kills are nice, but at the end of the day, proper lane management is what gets the victory. You dare challenge me? does pisot mean <laughs> if you guys know what it means please let me know down in the comment section if you have a good lead don't let go of it and keep pressuring the lanes instead of farming in a jungle you should prioritize farming in the lanes this will not only help you ensure that the lane waves will be lopsided to your advantage this also lessens the space the enemy team can move to Pressuring the lanes can help out in map control, which will then impact their farming further as they will be hesitant on leaving the safety of their home turrets. What do you guys think so far? Is he better? Is this going to be sufficient? Or does this revamp still suck? Personally, I am kinda okay with this buff they did with Argus recently. Though I still think he needs to be further improved, but this isn't as worse as the recent buff they did a few days ago. Uh, I kinda like the dash he gets from his passive, despite its disadvantages and glitchy behavior. Uh, especially since you can use it in conjunction with his second skill. I also like the fact that they lowered down the ultimate's cooldown. Though I still think his second skill could really use further improvements such as widening its range or increasing the burst damage and lowering the curse damage, but overall, this is a pretty good buff. As always, thank you so much for watching and if you haven't yet, 
don't forget to leave a like share and subscribe to this channel and like i said earlier don't be shy when it comes to sharing your thoughts and feedback all right the comment section is open for your thoughts anyway stay safe everyone peace